Hello everybody, Richard the Filmmaking Fan 279 here, and since it's close to Halloween, well, by the time I'm making this video, it's recording in September, but I'm going to release it on October 4th. It's going to be part of my Halloween special, where I review creepypastas and even horror movies of different kinds. And if I kind of sound weird, just know my throat is not feeling well. But either way, today we're going to be talking about a creepypasta, and I'm going to review it. And this one, I'm going to give you guys a quick... I'm going to let you guys know, this was one of the first creepypastas to scare me. And I mean it, in a literal way. Like, this creepypasta was so creepy, like, it's in, right down from the imagery, to the realism, to its intelligent writing. And basically, now while I will admit I'm not freaked out by it now, I was pretty scared of this thing when I first listened to it. From time to time I tell the story to my friends, and I guess they pretty like it. And this creepypasta is probably one of my top five favorites, yeah, somewhere at number two I guess. And this one is an alternate ending to Toy Story 3. Yes, you heard me. Basically, let me start off why I saw that. First of all, I was getting into this YouTuber called The Shadow Reader, which I will leave a link to his channel, and by the way, shout out to you. And, um, yeah, I basically was getting into his channel. I read a lot of, I saw a lot of bad creepypastas, and I watched random ones, I listened to random ones that I thought were gonna, that I think are just trash. Like the Shrek director's cut and the Emoji Movie 2, the uh, Apple's Death, even frickin'. What was the name of that one? What was the name of, a, of one of them? Uh, I don't know. There were a lot of crap, trashy ones. And um, there was. But however. When I clicked on this one, the Toy Story 3 alternate ending, I was not expecting much. I thought it was going to be a cliched mess. However, when I actually started listening, the first startup actually was pretty good. The whole... Let me take some time to remember that. Wish I could give you a classic. This happened to a friend of a friend of mine. I honestly truly do. Then I can make it a lot less gruesome in my head than it already was. Then I could doubt it like the rest of you, because even though this happened to me, even though there were witnesses, sometimes I barely even believe it myself. It's the wails of my now four-year-old daughter at night that remind me that it did indeed happen. T well, that's just a quote from this first startup, and that is a perfect startup, by the way. You're introducing yourself, telling you what you... It's a perfect way to set up your character... And then it goes on saying the, the daughter liked Toy Story, and it, she turned three before that incident. And the theater they always went to, with where they play movies like Snow White to recent Pixar films, that is a perfect plot device. The Toy Story and the theater. And, uh, yeah. I kind of like that. It is cliche. It is a cliche. Now, granted, that protagonist even mentions that cliches can be over the top. However, it's not a cliched story, actually. I'll get into that later, but what else? And then, now, it was actually pretty good for the first couple paragraphs. And then when it said nearly the end, when things got strange, it didn't... Was when things got strange. It didn't seem off at first, but I would soon find out, as every other family in the theater would. That sets up the terrifying mood of what she meant, the protagonist meant, towards the start. And the first sign was, um, the screen jammed on a constant loop of the toys screaming when they fell in the, what's it called, conveyor belt. And then we got to look at the well-known blue screen of death with that awful screaming sound going on and on like a broken record. Now that's pretty creepy. That pretty terrified me because, whoa, how did... Because maybe the... I first thought maybe the projector didn't work. 
because maybe the film wasn't that good because I, I thought that at first, but as I kept listening, I was wrong. Then, like, like, the movie started where it left off, where it left off instantly with a loud click coming from the cabin up behind me. I was like, that jump scared me a bit with the clicking sound. And uh, it kind of built up a new, a kind of terrifying mood when it, the first, the second terrifying sign was, um, when it said it was their voices, where they were different. They were similar, but Woody was clearly wasn't voiced by Tom Hanks anymore. Now that kind of set up a new terrifying, at well, not a new, but kind of kept building up that atmosphere. And then, you know, what else was there? The protagonist made a mention of, have you ever watched those old 30s cartoons like Betty Boop where the, in, the screen keeps constantly moving and never stops? A few years later, they figured it was more natural to have stop animation because that's how we work. We don't notice it, but we stop in between motions. Made it, making an example of that, and then going on to why she said it, well, it's because the animation on the big screen just didn't stop moving like in those old cartoons. And saying stuff like, if you thought it looked psychedelic with hand drawn, 30s hand drawn animation, well, computer animation makes it look twice as disturbing. And even though I never seen that, that pretty is terrifying. Even making the mention that of uh, that clearly was not like the movie I had at home. And I was just like, that is clearly not like the movie I watched many times as a younger kid either. And then it said, you know, making a mention that if you've seen the movie a lot of times, you know that a claw saves them when they're about to give up. However, things got really, really terrifying. The moment she's, the protagonist said the claw saving the toys never came down. What else was there? Uh... There was no heavenly light before a last minute rescue. That was fine, but then it got, oh no, on my face when she's, the protagonist said, there was no rescue. That's when things got pretty terrifying. The toys started to scream, and then their hands, which we were holding onto, started to shrink in some plastic goo. Now, I'm not going to go ahead and mention all of them, and get the, it had imagery. The imagery was so perfect. I mean, my head could even make out what was going on in the footage. My head, even though there was no footage, my head made out what the footage could have looked like. It's That was the first time a story ever or, or made me think of what it could have looked like. Like, you know, the and there was no blood or gore. Like I said, it was actually the plastic melting, molding itself off the hinges and bursting into flames. And then making a mention that maybe it was because you get to know these characters so well that you feel them alive. You don't need blood or organs spilled. You just need to see their suffering. So deep, you feel it too. And that, that right there is terrifying. I could even imagine that. And I could feel that as well. I don't know why, but the in that was a good comparison. And then, you know, go on to mention that the reason why that ending was there was because the theater, there was a virus stored in the computer that dis that projected the movie. And, and they made a theory that um, someone could have hacked the projector to put on that ending and um, what, co and they covered their tracks pretty well. Now that alone is realistic, because there are people like that. Now let's talk about the aftermath of when I first read it. I was creeped out. Really. I tried going to Thrift Store City, and that didn't work. And that's when I bought that Land Before Time, The Patriot, and... You guys have probably seen that video from months ago. I'll probably leave a link in the description box as soon as I find it. You know what I mean. And I'll also leave a link to Shadow Reader's new YouTube channel, the same name. But I'm also going to leave a link to one of the videos that feature the narration of Toy Story 3 alternate ending. And just a quick off-topic thing. Like, I had this from when I was a kid, right? 
And I remember going when I went to Florida this summer, I found this in storage. And I was so creeped out, still creeped out by that story that I did not want to take this with me. But it was only until when I started telling it to my friends that I started to lose my fear of that pasta. And then I took this with me. Also for nostalgia reasons. And it still works. Yeah, it's, it does that because it's really old. I had that thing for a long time. Now, my final thoughts on the Toy Story 3 alternate ending. Alright. It, it is one of my favorite creepy pastas. Like I said, top five favorite. And it is a story I could recommend you guys read and even listen to on Halloween. Because it is sure to creep you out. Even if you're in a... And if you like being creeped out by creepypastas, then go ahead and add that add to your list of creepypastas to read around the Halloween season. It's it, it had imagery that was able to help me imagine what the footage could have looked like. It's realism. It's sense of mystery put into the story. And even... Intelligent storytelling without using the cliches, but mentioning how cliches can be over the top. This creepypasta is one of the mass is one heck of a masterpiece. And you're gonna see me review more creepypastas for the Halloween season. And um yeah, basically. So either way, what's my final rating of Toy Story 3 alternate ending? Five out of five. Yes. I highly recommend this creepy pasta to you guys. So, either way, thank you guys so much for watching my first episode of Halloween Reviews. And stay tuned. If you want to see more Halloween videos, subscribe to my channel and tap the bell for notifications so you can get notified of all the new Halloween movies and creepy pastas I'll be reviewing this m month. All month long of October until Halloween. And just to give you a quick reminder, I'm going to be doing a special video on Halloween night. And it might not be released on Halloween night, but it might be released either on October 31st or November 1st, depending. But it'll most likely come out November, not October 31st. But either way, thank you guys for watching. Richard the Filmic Fan 279 signing out. And if you like this video, subscribe to become the next, my next little filmmaking fan. See you guys in my next review, and and remember, there are only a few more days till Halloween. Silver Shamrock.